Hi, I am Ali Ahmed. In this video, we are going to do deep dive analysis of installation phase one, that is pre-install check. So let's get started. The pre-install check phase start when we attach media to Windows and hit install button. So at this stage, it is just preparing to install. We can see that it is waiting, uh, waiting for the installer to complete the initialization. At this stage, it is doing pre-checks. And we click next. Installer is ready to do the vCenter install. Now, at this stage, if we look at the temp location, which is really C users, administrator, or whatever user you uh, are using to install the uh, you know, vCenter server, app data, uh, local, and temp. And you will see there are several logs uh, being created. And let me just explain you all the logs. The very first log we can see here, this is actually a, te a text file, which, will, uh, which is in its initial stage. So it will become text file, file later. So the name is vc-install. This file will have a summary of all the installation phases. And it will also have the information about the uh, installation state. Uh, for example, if this was, uh, if your installation was successful or cancelled or failed. <clears throat> then we have vimvcsmsi.log. This log is being created by Windows installer. This log will log all the activity uh, about uh, the installation and it will start from this phase and it will uh, be there till the end of the installation. Then we have uh, vimvcs uh, precheck report.html. As name suggests, it's a report that has been created by vCenter installer and we will see what is there in that report. So all the pre-checks has been captured in this report. Then we have vm install.log. This is again like you know msi.log, but this log will be more descriptive. You will be able to um, uh, most of the time find the issue in this log, and this log will suggest to you uh, if your uh, I mean give you a clue if there is any other additional log you need to look. So now we understand different uh, type of log. Let's see what is there in those logs. As we can see, pre-install validation report suggests us that the validation which has been done on the Windows machine uh, was successful. All the pre-checks came successful. There is no warning message or any error message. So if there was any issue or uh, in install check uh, was not able to do um, verification, you would expect uh, a warning message or error message listed here. So that was uh, pretty much about pre-install validation report. Let's see what is being logged there uh, in VM install log and in other logs. Let's check uh, VM install log first. So if we uh, look at VM install log uh, closely, we can see here the stage, its pre-install check stage. We can see uh, it is checking operating system. We also can see that the system uh, is, you know, creating a file that is known as VIM, VCS pre-check report that we saw earlier. So whatever, uh, you know, uh, checks we saw there uh, in uh, VCS pre-check report uh, was performed by uh, the installer. And you can, you can see all those uh, information there uh, in VIM install, uh, VM install dot log. If we see, VIM VCS MSI dot log at the same time, we can see the same thing but in a different way. Here, if we if if we see, we can understand that return value is one means whatever installer was doing at the time, that was successful. But you really need to understand these codes. Uh, for example, if you see uh, uh, return value three, that is fatal errors, and so we will suggest to you 
to read uh, you know windows uh, installer error code so you will be able to understand but if you uh, if you see this log you will uh, most of that time you will see uh, return value 1 means the operation was successful so let's click on next at this time you are uh, you are accepting the terms of license agreement and that is being logged here so as i said uh, vim vcs msi dot log value 1 means it was successful then you are uh, selecting deployment type uh, the same information is being logged here as you can see so if you want to check if let's say you have uh, you have log bundle and you just want to make sure that uh, what was the uh, you know deployment model uh, selected by someone who gave you log uh, you can check it from here there are so many other ways which we will discuss in later videos okay so at this stage you selected uh, embedded deployment model so let me just go back so so that that will actually help you remind this so um, we are selecting embedded model here and we are clicking next and the log says it is doing hardware check so it will go ahead and do hardware check based on the deployment type you select let's say if you are selecting for vcenter server then again the installer will go and check the hardware version and uh, all the required information uh, uh, in, regarding hardware uh, to make sure that your vCenter can be installed on this hardware and then again vCenter if you are selecting embedded based on that information based on that requirement instead of will go ahead and validate the hardware check then at this stage you see in msi.log so vim hyphen vcs hyphen msi log i am calling it msi so uh, don't get confused when I say msi.log sometime. So you can see this log suggests that validation of FQDN is being done. But if we look at vm install.log, then we can we can see that there are the same thing in, in, in very detail. As you can see, the system is performing um, uh, checks for uh, for for the FQDN. It is verifying, it is suggesting that there are two, um, you know, IP versions enabled in this machine. And you can see here, if you come, you can say F FQDN validation is not a IP version 6 FQDN. And if you read the message, this is the same message which is being displayed here. So if you read this message, this message suggests though you have ip version 4 and ip version 6 enabled but your fqdn is set for ip version 4 so it is just giving you a disclaimer we are going to use ip version 4 fqdn uh, um, and if you have any concern it's just a warning go ahead and fit uh, you know correct it or installer will go ahead and um, do the install using ip version 4 fqdn so if we click next at this stage we can see that we we have uh, given uh, domain information that is single sign on domain information and you if you open msi.log you will see the value return one means installer has done uh, sso domain verification and it was good but if you really want to dig into and find out what went wrong, then you need to look at vm install.log. And here you see that it is uh, entering into SSO default site verification. It is checking the name, whether you have, uh, you have a dot or not, or uh, does contain multiple consecutive dots or, so basically, uh, VMware has actually uh, a, a prerequisite like you must have a dot and you should not start with dot uh, when you try to write SSO name. So this is uh, the installer is actually checking the same information here. So as you can see it is now verifying SSO site and finally you can see that SSO name for property SSO site name successful validated. 
So if anything is uh, was uh, uh, you know entered wrongly, let's say if user uh, started with a dot or he missed uh, a dot in the name, then he, you will see that is being logged here. It will actually help you what exactly user uh, made mistake um, uh, while entering the name. So this is pretty descript uh, descriptive log, uh, as I said earlier. Now, after this, we can see the installation uh, installer is validating both SSO password and SSO uh, strength. So it is checking if whether your password is okay, and it is also checking that you know your password beats the complexity and all those things. So it is just doing validation for the password. It, if, if everything is okay, then you can see that it was successful. So let me repeat it again. MSI.log, which is a Windows log, will give you information whether it was successful or uh, it was not successful. But VM uh, install.log will give you descriptive uh, information about the same, uh, let's say, component or uh, same step. At this stage, let let me just click next. This time, we, we are selecting a database. We are making um, sure are making a selection for our um, vCenter server database. In, in this case, we are using embedded database. So we can see that uh, installer is checking for DSN and it says that DSN was not there. This is kind of fresh installation. So we have not created a DSN. So, and you can see that the information about the database selection is being uh, recorded here in msi.log also. So, let me click next and see what is happening. At this stage, we are making a selection or configuring ports. This could be uh, the place where maybe some of your application is using some ports which is actually required by the VM installer or vCenter installer. At this stage, um, you might experience kind of issue if you are managing your uh, port numbers manually by yourself or any application which is conflicting the uh, same uh, or conflicting or maybe using the same port. So uh, let me show you what is there in uh, vm install.log. As you can see, whatever selection we, that was the default selection we made. So at this stage, you can see vm install.log is doing validation of all the port whether it is good to go or if it is being used by some other application if any application let's say you are using some port and that is being used by some application already you will see that is being um, logged here you will simply say that is already reserved for by some uh, whatever uh, service or application is being uh, using that port so at this stage if you look at this log you will be able to find out what is the application uh, which is using that port and that is actually required by your vCenter server and you can talk to your application and do whatever is required to free up that port or maybe if you have an option to change that port. So let me just take you to the next log which is VIM VCS MSI.log. So as we see, this is also doing the same function quite differently here um, but it is exactly the same thing it's just giving you uh, you know it's new value one and return value one you can simply see here so this is pretty much windows way of just uh, just logging uh, the same information this is uh, not as much descriptive as our vm install.log but this is this is also a good place to just give a clue uh, uh, get a clue like or oh, what went wrong. So if I hit next, we have um, we we are actually going to join VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. So that is also being logged here. So let me just click next. At this stage, a vCenter installer is going to install a vCenter server based on your selection. So we selected embedded. Uh, we already have given several other information 
for example port information so based on that selection we have already made installer is going to check the space and uh, check the permission so you can see here you can see installer is checking whether you have permission or not installer is also making sure what is the space required for uh, particular drive or maybe folder you can see here you can see here so installer is actually making uh, sure that uh, now you have selected embedded installation you have selected or um, so and these will be the location for your installation uh, installer so do you have do you really have space for the installation to complete properly so finally we can see that that required space so if i just highlight this have the required amount of space required space is this and installer has found this many space so we are pretty much in good shape so installer will go ahead and uh, move into the next step so the next step this is a summary whatever we have select we uh, selection we have already made for the installation and that was about uh, our pre-install check stage so we saw that we already verified the verified whether operating system hardware is supported for for our you know vcenter server installation we also checked if the ports uh, that is required for vcenter server to run properly uh, is available on the machine or not and then we'll we uh, check the you know required disk space and we uh, we also saw that installer were checking if we have uh, right permission for the installer to run so after we have you know satisfied every uh, requirement installer need installer will gather this information and move into the next phase that is install start phase and uh, this is what we are going to discuss in next video thank you very much